Good morning, Year 5, and welcome to our first reading lesson of the week. At the end of last week, we encountered a new non-fiction text, all about prisons, which was related to the text that we've been reading, our fiction text that we've been reading, The Last Wild. I'd like you to think about this question. Why was the prisons text relevant to The Last Wild? Pause the video, write down your response. When you've done that, press play again to continue the lesson. Great work, Year 5. You're absolutely right. The reason that this text is relevant to The Last Wild is because in many ways, the description of Spectrum Hall closely resembles what we'd expect a prison to look like and to be like. And we will explore that in more detail tomorrow when we begin to respond to some comprehension questions uh, which connect both texts, the non-fiction text and The Last Wild. However, today our focus is going to be on vocabulary and our learning objective is to understand unfamiliar vocabulary in context. Now, cast your mind back to last Friday and you will remember that we learned to fluently read this text. Fluency is a great aid to comprehension and in fact fluency will help us to achieve our learning objective today to understand some of the unfamiliar vocabulary in the text. So before we begin to focus on our learning objective in earnest what we are going to do first is we are going to rehearse reading the text fluently one more time. I'm going to model to you fluently reading the first paragraph of the text, which you can see on your screen. But please make sure that you have the text in its entirety in front of you. It is in your work pack and it is also on Seesaw for you to refer to. Prisons. What is a prison? A prison, also referred to as a jail, is a place where people are forced to live if their freedom has been taken away. The main use of prisons is as a punishment for breaking the law. Those who break the law and are convicted, found guilty, in court, can receive a prison sentence, which is an order to spend a set amount of time in prison. Prisons are usually run by the government. Now that I've modelled to you how to read that paragraph fluently, I would like you to practice reading the entire text fluently. When you're ready to begin reading, press pause. When you've done so, press play to recommence our lesson. Go. Beautiful reading. Well done, Year 5. And that's really going to help you to be successful with today's learning objective, which we're now going to turn our attention to, to understand unfamiliar vocabulary in context. Now, in front of me, I have the text and I have this vocabulary question. Explain what is meant by incarcerated. The unfamiliar vocabulary here is incarcerated, so I'm highlighting that in the question. Now, the vocabulary toolkit requires me firstly to look at the word incarcerated, I've done that. Next, I need to scan to find that word in the text. When I scan, remember, I'm not reading every single word, I'm scanning through the text, I'm looking for it quickly to identify a particular word, in this case, incarcerated. Okay, I'm scanning for incarcerated. Ah, here we have it. So now I've found the word, I'm going to underline it within the text. Here it is incarcerated uh, and if I go back to my toolkit I can see that I need to read the sentence the previous sentence and the next sentence to see if that helps me to define what incarcerated means so I'm going to start by reading this sentence I'm going to trace my finger back until I get to the beginning of the sentence which is here and now I'm going to read it aloud also criminals who are deemed to be a flight risk are incarcerated here under strict conditions. Okay, I'm still not sure what incarcerated means having read the sentence, so I'm going to read the uh, previous sentence. In fact, I'm going to read the entire paragraph because there's only uh, one previous sentence before that. 
The level of security a prison has depends on the type of prison. Maximum security prisons are for criminals who have committed the most serious crimes. Also, criminals who are deemed to be a flight risk are incarcerated here under strict conditions. Inmates who are considered to be a risk to either themselves or others are sometimes kept in solitary confinement where they are regularly monitored by prison staff. Okay, I'm still not entirely sure what incarcerated means, so I'm going to look back at the uh, vocabulary toolkit and see if that can help me. Now it says to check for other explainers like a picture or glossary. Now there are no illustrations within this text, there's no glossary, so I'm going to have to try and use another strategy. The next step is to identify the word class. Is the noun, is an adjective. Well I think that incarcerated is a verb and the reason that I think that is because it has an ed suffix. Now, not all words which end in ed are verbs. Red is an obvious example which springs to mind. Red is an adjective to describe a colour, isn't it? Uh, for example, the red car. However, in this case, I know that incarcerated uh, ed is a suffix because we could also have the word incarcerate, to incarcerate. So that tells me that incarcerated must be a verb. I'm now going to reread the sentence, knowing that it's a verb, to see if that helps me to understand what it means. Also, criminals who are deemed to be a flight risk are incarcerated here under strict conditions. Now, when it's talking about here, that's a pronoun, and I know that that refers to uh, the maximum security prisons, because that is the place which was previously mentioned. So here refers to maximum security prisons. So I'm now going to reread the sentence substituting that word. Also, criminals who are deemed to be a flight risk are incarcerated in maximum security prisons under strict conditions. So there's something in prisons, maximum security prisons. OK, I wonder in that case then if incarcerated must mean to be kept in a prison because it's talking about criminals who are deemed to be a flight risk. Now, flight must mean they're likely to escape, which is always a consideration in a prison. Flight risk, likely to escape. So therefore, uh, incarcerated must mean kept in a prison. I'm now going to reread the sentence. This is the final part of the vocabulary toolkit, where it says to substitute the word in the text with your answer, does it make sense? So, also, criminals who are deemed to be a flight risk are kept here under strict conditions. Good, it does make sense, so incarcerated must mean to keep in prison. I'm going to show you one more example before we do a question together. Let's read the question. One of the purposes of prisons is to incapacitate criminals. Explain what this means. OK, so obviously the unfamiliar vocabulary here is to incapacitate. Now, I can already tell from the way the question is written that incapacitate must be a verb. And that helps me to do this, to identify the word class. To incapacitate a criminal is to do something to a criminal, so it must be a verb. Let's see if we can identify where the word appears in the text by scanning the text. So I know that I'm looking for incapacitate. Ah, okay, so here I've got the word incapacitation, which is not quite the same as incapacitate, however obviously it's related. Incapacitate is a verb. The word which appears in the text here is incapacitation. So I'm going to underline that word, and I can see that the root of the word has been changed by adding the suffix shun. 
And I know that shun is a common ending for nouns. So incapacitate has been changed to incapacitation, which is now a noun. However, this part of the text should still help me to identify what the meaning of the word is. So incapacitation means locking criminals up stops them from committing more crimes. OK, locking criminals up stops them from committing more crimes. So to incapacitate prisons. Now, this this appears under the subheading. What is the purpose of prisons? So one of the purposes of prisons, as it says in the question, is to incapacitate criminals. To incapacitate criminals must mean what it says here in the text. It stops them from committing more crimes. OK, so to incapacitate criminals means to stop them from committing more crimes. I need to finally substitute my meaning with the word in the text to see if that makes sense. So incapacitation. This means to incapacitate criminals, which is to lock them up so that they are not able to commit more crimes. That makes sense, so I'm happy that to incapacitate means to stop, and in this case to stop criminals from committing more crime. Now it's really important to note, notice here, Year 5, that when I was sc scanning the text, the word incapacitate did not appear within the text. The word that appeared within the text was incapacitation. And that should teach you that when you're scanning a text for a particular word, you may also be scanning for a variant upon the word. It may appear with a different suffix, for example, and as a different type of word, in this case, a noun. Sometimes you may even need to scan a text to find a synonym. We're going to have a go at this question together. When I say go, read the question aloud. Go. Well done. What is the meaning of solitary confinement? So when I say go, say aloud the vocabulary that we're going to be attempting to define. Go. Good. The vocabulary which we're going to attempt to define is solitary confinement. When I say go, scan the text to find solitary confinement within the text. I'm going to ask you to pause your video at the same time. When you find the word, press play to continue our lesson. Go. I'm going to give you a prompt in case you haven't yet found it. You need to scan within the prison buildings and facilities paragraph. Well done. Solitary confinement appears in the final sentence of the paragraph here. Solitary confinement. Now what I'd like you to do, Year 5, is to read aloud the sentence containing the words solitary confinement. Go. Well done, Year 5. Beautiful reading. My turn. Inmates who are considered to be a risk to either themselves or others are sometimes kept in solitary confinement, where they are regularly monitored by prison staff. OK, I've read the sentence. What I need to do now is see if I can identify things like the word class. What type of word do you think solitary confinement is? Now, be aware, Year 5, of the fact that this actually obviously comprises two words and each part might be a different word class. Well done. Confinement is a noun. It contains the suffix munt, which is a good indicator, a good clue that it is a noun. And solitary 
is an adjective because it's describing the type of confinement. Now, we should be able to break down confinement into a root word and suffix. I've already told you that the suffix is munt. So in that case, what is the root word of confinement? Well done. The root word of confinement is to confine, or confine, which is a verb. Now I've explored the features of the word, I'm going to go back to the sentence, reread it, and see if the context can help me to understand what it means. In fact, you're going to do it. <laughs> so when I say go, read the sentence aloud one more time. Go. Good. My turn. Inmates who are considered to be a risk to either themselves or others are sometimes kept in solitary confinement, where they are regularly monitored by prison staff. So I know when it's talking about inmates, it's talking about the criminals or the prisoners, and they're considered, they're thought to be, a risk to either themselves or others, and they're sometimes kept in solitary confinement. Now, we've seen the word solitary in other texts. Um, for example, when we did a character description, the character that we described was a solitary boy. And we know that that meant by themselves, or by himself in that case. So solitary must be alone. And confinement, or to confine something, is to keep something. So therefore, solitary confinement must mean... Well done, Year 5. You're absolutely right. Solitary confinement means being kept alone. Let's just double check by substituting the word in the sentence to see if that makes sense. You're going to read it first, and when you get to solitary confinement, you're going to, instead of reading solitary confinement, you're going to say kept uh, by themselves and see if it makes sense. Go. Let's see. Inmates who are considered to be a risk to either themselves or others are sometimes kept by themselves where they are regularly monitored by prison staff. That does make sense, doesn't it? So solitary confinement must be to be kept by themselves, to be kept apart from others. Well done, Year 5. OK, Year 5. Now I've shown you how to respond to a couple of questions. We've had a go at one together. Now it's your turn to have a go at responding independently to prove to both yourself and to me that you're ready to begin your independent application. So when I say go, I'd like you to have a go at responding to this question entirely independently. You'll need to press pause on your video. When you've done that, press play again to check to see if you were right. Go. Let's check our work. So the question says, look at the paragraph, famous prisons in history. Which word means extremely cold in temperature? I'm going to go in the text to the subheading, famous prisons in history. And I'm going to reread to see if I can find any words which might mean extremely cold in temperature. Now, I know that cold is an adjective, so I'm probably looking for an adjective. In fact, it will probably be a synonym for cold. Let's have a look. Surrounded by frigid waters, it made escape virtually impossible. OK, well, I'm not entirely sure what frigid means. However, I know that water, particularly in a, in a big bay like San Francisco Bay, is likely to be extremely cold. So surrounded by extremely cold waters, and that would make es escape virtually impossible, wouldn't it? You wouldn't be able to swim across uh, a bay with extremely cold water. This did not dissuade people from attempting the risk of escape. OK, so frigid is the only word which appears within this paragraph that I think could possibly mean extremely cold. It is also an adjective, just like uh, cold. And in this case, it could uh, be describing water, which would be extremely cold. So therefore, the word which means extremely cold is frigid. Well done, Year 5. Now that we've responded to those questions together, you are ready to begin your independent application. So, 
please turn to your independent application in your work pack, complete the questions either in your home learning book or directly onto Seesaw, and I look forward to seeing your responses. Good luck, Year 5.